our Lord. Praise Jesus. My name is Blessing Ohakwe. I'm living at 21 Karimala Street, Ela Samaja, Isola Zone. When I was pregnant of this child, we are attending Sabbath Church. We are the, they are not calling God or Jesus. They used to call Yahshua and Yahweh. So, by that time that I was pregnant, the woman said that I would die on the pregnancy, that my mother should bring a month of money so that they will, so that she will pray for me that I will not die. My mother said, how much? She said that it's 20 naira. My mother said, is it because of 20 naira that my child will die? So my mother said that she will give her the money. So, one of our elections was in dream. When a member of this Gagada came, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are praying at the, at that church. So, did that like this, all of us fell down. So, my mother said, no, we will, we will start this Gagada. So, that time we started this Gagada. See me, I'm always seeking. Every month I have a sickness that I can't mention. So, since that time I started this Gagada, I haven't had that sickness again. And this time, when I, when I come to Thursday Revival, so, man of God for ministry, I say, if you have any problem, you should write it and write it off. So, I write it off. I, I write it and write it off. So, when the man of God pray over it. So, when we went, when we come to the meetings, uh, workers meeting, so, man of God said, if you know it, that will not let you go there. That you should write it. Or you should pray over it. So, I prayed over it. So, I said that I wanted to live at the retreat ground. So that the Lord, uh, so that when the die, when the death will come, that I will die at the retreat ground. So my soul will go to heaven. So, when, when, when it's on um, um, 24th, so I went and tell my mom that, you see, oh, maybe the Lord didn't love me. The Lord don't want me to deliver at the retreat ground. So my mother said, so you are one of those that didn't have faith. That I should have faith. That I should have faith. So I went to where, where I was walking. So immediately I, I raised up my hand to take a knife and peel the hand. I started laboring and I went. I delivered at 12 o'clock. Praise God. And I had a song. What am I see God? We stop. Hallelujah. What am I see God? We my third month of coming to, to this church. When I was at home, I, we are serving Juju before. So one day, I went with my friend to one native doctor to go and find out about my son where they said they are going to kill. So when we are there now, the man told me that uh, they are going to give me some problem about my womb, that I should be careful, that uh, one woman in which like that. Then I said, I have no enemy who is going to give me problem. So after that month now, I was started bleeding inside my private. So I went to the hospital. When I went there, they showed me 30 naira. And I took a card also 15 naira. They gave me medicine. The tea did not cure. So they said I should come to the to their health center. That is a big problem. So I went there. When I went there, it was in the afternoon. The doctor said I should come back in the in the end of the morning. That they cannot do anything to me in the afternoon again. Then I went to when I was coming, I met one of the brother on the way. He usually take my children to this church before. He asked me what is my problem. I told him. He said, Why can't I come to this church? I said that one of my sisters used to tell me about the miracle here, but I thought it is make believe a story. That uh, I was said that this church you have already come to company that they used to advise things and um, advertise uh, something that I didn't believe of all this type of thing. So one night like that, I just said, let me come and try the church you now. So in the night when I'm uh, sleepy, the juju went with the service before, worrying me throughout the night. So I was afraid I didn't come to the church. So the other sudden, I just wake up like a joke, then I came here. When I came here and I see the crowd of people play, I was afraid. I thought it is aeroplane wanted to land before. Then after that now, it was on Thursday, I find my way here by myself. Then they are praying for people who are sick, that it does the miracle day. Then I said, ah, let me see their miracle. Then I opened my eyes, I was see, I didn't see the God. Then I, after that now, I, I was saying it in my mind that what of me that I'm breathing inside my private, why the God can't do it for me? 
Biba would be able to say this. I hear a voice that some people are bleeding among us, that the person should raise up her hand. I myself, I open my eye, I don't see the God. I, I was just hearing only the voice. And I don't know where the person is talking from. Then I raise up my hand. Then I just hear her from my private food. Then I can't be able to look at When I reach home now, I didn't see the bleeding. Then I tell my children, it may be the God, the way you people, they go to Paradise. This is God, the world, this man, they take two people to Baghdad. That, that true God, though, the bleeding that are bleeding, he stop. Oh. So, since then, I didn't see the bleeding again. That is why I can't say thank you to my God. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. God is wonderful. Through the power of the enemy, she started bleeding. She went to hospitals, they could not help her. They told her to come to Baghdad and say, ah, I've been hearing about churches. It's just like all those other churches. But we thank the Lord that the very first day she will come here, she said, I want to see that God with my eyes. She had been an idol worshiper. So she thought this was a God you can see with your naked eyes. So as we were praying, she was opening our, our eyes. She wants to see God. Then right where she was staying, he said, if there is a God here, ah, if he's healing people, I'm having bleeding. Why is that God, why can that God not heal me of my bleeding? Before she will finish that talk, the man of God says, there are some people here who are having bleeding in their private parts. And that if they will raise up their hands, that there was a particular woman. If she will raise up her hands, they will pray for her, and that bleeding will stop. She was surprised. She opened her eyes again, she will see the God who was saying that thing. She could not see it. And the man of God prayed, and immediately she just felt a sand, boom. And she could not look at her body dead. But when she got home, she examined herself, and she saw that that bleeding had stopped immediately. And there was no trace of that bleeding again in her life. And she was able to call on her children and say, I know that that God, that that man of God is introducing you to Bagada. He must be the true God. Praise the Lord. 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 Emi ti mo duro awon aje won ti won ti fi ami si mi lara o n lo bi odun ma edogbon mo gbe kini e o wu ni egbe mi bayi mo wa gbe lo se osutu awon doctor wo won ni ko si ai san tokan be nwa to ya owo kuro nbe o tun wo se ese o ma rin kaakiri to ba rin si bi ka ma mi bi eyan o le mi le me ta tun duro to ba tun to bi wa ta ti ka tun mi to ba mi emi fun ra ma mo ama sha mi o te emi fun ra mi o mo pe awon aje na fi ami si mi lara loro kan sha ngba ti mo wa si ti won se ipa ede kan ni isolo mo wa lo si won wa su fun mi na ni o keye pe o kan mi lo didi lo won wa su fun mi pe kin wa n ba lo si be ba na gba draja fun mi won gba draja fun gbogbo yan won ka gbo wole bi ti aisan yen wa eni kan ti aisan ba wa la re ko gbo wole be n ba gbo wole be bo ti le ye pe gba ni won gba draja ni asiko yen ti mo gbo wole ti won gba drop fun olukuluku wa mo gbo wole be aisan yen ba lo ba lo sha bo tun to bi jo keta o tun o tun start o tun mi ngba tun mo wa won ba wa ti gba gada nbi bai sha won tun so pe ibi kibi to ba ndun oni kaluku tabi asan ka isan to ba wa lara wa ka fi owo le be ba gbo wole be bi aisan yen bo se lo ni yen ni o ba mi mo lati igba yen o sa lo parawata awon agbara awon aje je ni ele ama sha agbara jesu oju agbara aje lo enikan to ba ni igbekele oluwa yo ri wo san igbekele ti mo ni ti oluwa le mi papa ni mo se ri wo san bo gba isan ti kuro na agbara mi leyin na ni pe won ni ka gba ke pe nkan ki nkan ti o ni kaluku ba fe ni nkan rere ni gba odun yen pe ke a ko sinu we nba ko sinu we tori pe bo ti je bi mo ti je pe oni se owo ama sha mo je alaini ni pa ti ara mo de ko sinu we pe nkan bye bye mo fe ni sande to ko jai mo wa ta ku ti olohun pe olohun ele gbare ba o ni emi se je alairi je alairi mu wa pese fun mi ngba ni mo ba gba dura ni jo sunday yen ngba ti a close mo bere si gba dura si olohun ngba ni mo wa bi dele wa ni ore mi kan pe o ti wa mi wa le o o pe kin wa o duro si le bi ago meji ngba ti ori mi lo ba lo pe kin wa ba un ni le mu ba lo ba o da gbe ise mi to ye pe olohun de bai ni mi pade mo duko lodo olohun ati lowo eyin o sise praise the lord praise the lord we thank god for what the lord did for him 
For 25 years, witches and wizards have touched him, and they put something within his body. That thing will be breathing as a human being. He will feel it, he will hear the breathing, and that thing will be moving from different parts of his body. Definitely, he had tried so much, uh, much effort to remove that thing from the body. He will go to the doctors, the doctors will diagnose him, and they will say there was nothing wrong with him. Everything failed. Until during the, Easter, uh, during the December retreat, he went to the solo retreat ground. And then they prayed for him, and eventually he came to Bagada. And when he came on the Thursday like this, as the man of God was ministering, everybody was asked to lay hands on whatever they had their problems. And he was able to identify where this thing had gone to, because the thing would be moving to different parts of his body. He laid hands on that point, and the prayer of faith was said, and that was the very last day he had felt the movement of that thing. Since that time he had been delivered from the hands of witches and wizards. Apart from that, he had been in terrible poverty. And this year, at the beginning, everybody was asked to put down whatever they needed. And he put it down that he wanted the Lord to, make, to supply for all his needs. And he's now giving, all, giving testimony that he has received a job. And through that job, God has provided for his needs. And he's no more in a state of want. We thank God for what the Lord has done for him. I pray that what God has done for these people, he will do for you also. Shall we rise up, please? I believe you are here tonight because you believe there is God. And that God is still alive. And He's still working wonders today. And the Lord is able to take whatever problems we have, He's able to take everything away. I just want you to bow your head in prayer and close your eyes. Whatever your need may be, just quietly tell the Lord you don't want to go back home empty-handed. You are here right in the presence of God. And you don't want to come in the presence of God and go back empty-handed. Amen. Our Father, we come before you as a great creator God. We know that with you all things are possible. You are the God of all knowledge, the God of all power. And with you nothing shall be impossible. I'm asking tonight that your mighty hand, your healing hand, your delivering hand will touch everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Where the devil has been having a victorious time, I come against that devil and I bring him down in the lives of the people in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm asking that your mighty power will touch everyone here tonight and nobody will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. Amen. Glorify your holy name. Work your miracles here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's be seated. Tonight you have to pay close attention to what I have to say. Because I'm talking about God. The God of all grace. Grace is God's blessing. Poured upon undeserving people beyond all request and expectation. You know, we have met many people that come to church and they do not know on what basis they will receive blessing from God. And I'm here to tell you tonight that you receive blessing from God on the basis of grace, the blessing of God, the riches of Christ, the blessing of healing and deliverance, miracle coming upon you when you are undeserving and it comes upon you without or beyond your request or beyond your expectation and i'm showing you examples in the bible that will show you that when god heals it is not because listen to me because you are good no it's not because you have great faith 
God heals because of His grace. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. The ninth hour was three, up, three in the afternoon, three o'clock. Now you know people that find it difficult to pray at three o'clock in the afternoon because it's hot. When there is heat, their face evaporates. But they feel that when it is cool, and there is no heat, and there is no sun, then they will be able to pray. You see, prayer does not depend on what time, because it's all by grace. You know, you may even feel tired, and you can pray, and God will answer, because it doesn't depend on your tiredness, it's by grace. Verse 2, and a certain man, look at him, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. This was a man who was not expecting a miracle. You're asking me a question. Suppose I come to Bagada here. And I am not even expecting a miracle. Will I get a miracle? Yes. Suppose I'm a newcomer. And I've never even had any testimony. And I come. And all that I'm asking for is somebody will give me one naira. Will God give me a miracle? Yes. You see this man was not expecting healing. There was no testimony he heard. There was no clapping. He had never seen any other person praying for the sick. He was expecting money. Kobo Naira. But you know, God gave him more than Kobo, more than Naira. Because it's a God of grace. Think about it. A man that was not praying. The people that were praying were in the temple. He sat at the gate of the temple. He never went to inside the church. He didn't want prayer. He didn't want anything. He wanted only money. But God said, because of grace. Now you think about it. A man that does not pray, does he merit healing? No, sir. But God doesn't deal with you because of your marriage. He deals with you because of your grace. Verse 3. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? He asked an alms. You know what? He did not know the difference between apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. He didn't know that these were apostles. In fact, he did not know the difference between a saint and a sinner. The sinners were going into the temple, and these saints were going into the temple. These apostles were going to the temple. And he did not say, pray for me. No. He said, give me money. And Peter fastening his eyes upon him. With John said, look on us. And he gave he the paid attention unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, then Peter said, these are the words of grace. You know, a man that he had never seen the lame rising and walking, never seen God answering prayer, never heard of a miracle, never seen a miracle. He wanted money from these people. He expected he'll just put their hand in the pocket and give them, give him money. And Peter looked at him and said, silver and gold have I none. He said, why do you wait then? Keep on moving. If you don't have money, get out of the way. Let me get money. You know, he was totally discouraged. Can a discouraged man get miracle? Yes. Can a disappointed man have a miracle? Yes. And you are going to have a miracle tonight? You say, but I don't know how to pray. The man we are reading about, how much did he pray? He didn't even know the Lord's Prayer. You know, there's something surprising about God. You don't know how to pray. You don't know what psalm to read. You don't know what part of the Bible to read. And yet, a miracle is coming on your way. You'll find it 
when I finish preaching and I start praying now, a miracle will just come upon you. Because, you know, there's a man there that has been coughing for a long time. And tonight, you may not believe it, as I'm saying now, tonight when I pray for you, that cough is going to leave you in the name of Jesus. Amen. That man is on my right hand side, a large, large auditorium. The cough is going to go away completely. You see, this man did not know how to pray, what to pray for. He was asking for naira cobble, asking for money. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee. Listen to this. This is grace, the grace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood. And walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and uh, praising God. Why was he healed? Because he was holy? No, sir. Why was he healed? Because he read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. No, sir. Why was he healed? Because he was a man of great faith. No, sir. He wasn't even ready for the miracle. He was not healed because of anything in him. He was healed because of the grace of God. God's blessing. Giving to undeserving people beyond their expectation, beyond all request. He was not healed because of his knowledge. He had no knowledge of God. He had no knowledge of the things of God. He did not even know Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord. This is grace, only grace. I'm looking at Mark chapter 2. And I want to show you again the God of grace. And as we're sitting there, you depend only upon the grace of God. It's not by marriage. It's not because of what I have done, what you have done. It's because God is kind. God is love. God is a God of compassion, of mercy and grace. And look at Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And they could not come near unto him for the prayers. And they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Stop there. Look at me here. How will you feel? If, as we're here, every place is, you know, totally filled up. And there is no passage. And all our washers are having difficult time controlling the crowd. And then they bring a sick man. And they want that man to be healed. And they all of a sudden, because they could not pass, uh, you know, the congregation, the crowd, you just begin to hear, back, 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 on top of the preacher. And then, uh, you know, I look up, I say, who are those people over there? And then... Uh, you know, all this uh, building we are still trying to build up. They break it off. They, they take a sledge. They fling it away. They bring the man. You people who contributed the money for the auditorium to be built, you'll be saying, well, this people destroying the church of God. Do such people that destroy that house, do they merit healing? No, sir. What do they merit? Rebuke. Jesus, the preacher, should sit them down and say, what are you doing? Don't you have common sense? You know that, uh, you know, those who don't have common sense, they can get healing. Those who even destroy part of the house will be able to bring the sick man. You know, they can receive healing. How can that be done? By grace. Not because they merit it. You know, you think of somebody that came into the auditorium tonight and the usher said, sit down here. And he said, I'm sorry. I don't want to sit down there. I want to sit down where, where we'll see the preacher. 
And Osha said, now don't be disobedient. Go and sit down there. I'm sorry, I want to sit down that, in that other place. I'm asking you a question. Will God heal such a one? Yes, my brother. It's by grace. It's by grace. If God can heal these people that broke off somebody else's house, you know, after the healing, they didn't even turn around to say, oh, where is the hammer, where is the nail, to nail it back. They forgot, they were just rejoicing, and they went back home. For God to heal such people, it is by grace. Oh, you mean that, uh, you know, that man that was sick and came to the building and, uh, you know, just brushed out everybody and will not obey the word of God? You mean that when he comes, God will heal him? Oh, yes. Not because he's disobedient, but because of the grace of God. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Grace that is greater than all our problem. And you know, in verse 5, Jesus saw their faith. He saw the hole on the roof, but he saw their faith. He heard the noise of the armor on the roof, but he saw their faith. That's Jesus. You know, Jesus is not watching for your downfall. He's not watching for your tears. He's not watching for your sorrow. He's not watching for, you know, your unbelief. He's watching for your faith. And you know, Jesus Christ seeing you coming from Ajegule. Taking the bus, coming to Bagada, sitting down. You know, Jesus will see faith in that action. And when you had no money, and you came to such a place like this, and you said, I will get there. And you had to walk a kilometer to be able to come here. Jesus will look at you and he'll say, yes, you're walking, that's a walk of faith. You know, that attitude that will not give up, that will say, I will get to that place, no matter how difficult, how difficult it may be, I will get there. That's faith. And Jesus saw their faith. He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. What's that? That's salvation. Jesus, but they are not asking for salvation. They are asking for healing. Oh yes, but I'm not giving them the salvation because of the merit it or because they are asking. I'm giving them because of grace. Think about it. The first man I read to you, he was asking for money, he got healing. Think about it. The second one I'm reading to you, he is asking for healing, he got salvation first. Think about it. The God of all grace. Asking for something temporary. God gave him something permanent. Asking for something that is earthly. God gave him something heavenly. He's asking for the healing of the body. God gave him forgiveness and peace and cleansing. And eternal life. Oh, he's a God of all grace. He asked for a change in his body. God gave him a change in his soul and spirit. How can God do that? When this man was not even asking for an heavenly inheritance. How could God do that? It's the God of all grace. It's the grace of God. And you know today, that grace is going to be shown unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe you're only asking for arms, for money. And God is going to give you more than you're asking for. Maybe you're only asking for healing. And God is going to give you more than you're asking for. Because He's the God of all grace. You say, what will I do to merit it? You don't do anything. That's a beautiful thing in Christianity. You know, you don't have to pray 21 times. You don't have to roll on the ground. You don't have to cry. You don't have to do anything, whatever. Just look upon the Lord and the Lord will deliver you. He's delivering you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come with me to Luke chapter 7. I want to show you the compassion of the God of grace. Is a God of grace. And you'll see him ministering to those who have problems beyond their expectation, beyond their request. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11, And it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother and she was a widow and much people of the city was with her stop right there i'm showing you a woman a widow chattered in life 
very poor. At this time, she was weeping. Her husband had died some years ago. Now the only son she had had died. The breadwinner had died. The only son alive to pay the house rent had died. The only son alive to take care of her had, had died. A great loss came upon her and thoughts in life were, were shattered. Weak, weeping, a widow. Now the child, the son is lost. And she, she never hoped for any miracle. She was, she was going to the grave, paying the last honor to the dead child. And she looked at that ch dead child and said, I will never have again. If I have hope that I will, I will be able to have another son, where is husband? Husband is gone. Even if I will have an husband tonight, as old as I am, if God will give me a child tonight, I am sure it will be a son. This was the thought of the woman. And then Jesus met her. She, she wasn't looking for Jesus. Jesus met her. She was not praying. She was only weeping. Jesus met her. There was no expectation within her. Jesus met her. There was no faith. It was only weeping. No husband, no helper. Only Christ. Look with me at verse 13. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep now, that's the voice of grace. She has never given anything to Jesus. She never knelt down to Jesus. She never worshipped Jesus. She has never been to Jesus' meeting. She, never knew, she did not know any disciple. She did not know Jesus as Savior and Lord. She was a total stranger to Jesus. And Jesus said, weep not. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. That's the grace of God. And you know, maybe you are weeping. And you have never met Jesus Christ. You don't know him. Where is he? You had that woman, an idol worshiper that came into this meeting. And she opened her eyes to see where is God. And a miracle came upon her immediately. That's the God of grace. The God of grace. And you know tonight, the God of grace will visit you. Your problem he will remove. Oh, your tears he will wipe away. You know, preach, you say, preacher, you don't know me. I'm a sinner. Well, don't worry about that Jesus is Savior. If you're a sinner and you meet the Savior, he will take away your sin. You say, but I don't know how to pray. Don't worry. Jesus is praying for you. You say, but I don't know Bible. Well, but I'm reading Bible to you now. The Bible I'm reading to you tonight, that's enough for you for today. Jesus will come across you. He will take your load of sin away. And he will take your sickness away in Jesus' name. Yeah. Verse 14. And he came and touched the beer. And the day that bear him stood still. And he said, that's the voice of grace. And he said, oh Jesus. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, this woman that was weeping, Jesus said, Weep not, and said to the dead child, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. That's the grace of God. How much did Jesus charge her? Ten naira? A hundred naira? No, sir, is a God of grace. How much are you going to pay for the healing tonight? Nothing. It's by grace. You come in here, you meet the Lord, and the Lord will completely deliver you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 9. I'm reading there from verse 32. Acts, chapter 9, verse 32. And it came to pass. As Peter passed throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dwelt at Leda. And there he found a certain man named Aeneas, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto him, And Peter said unto him, Aeneas, Christ Jesus, Makest thee whole. Arise and make thy bed. And immediately he arose. How much did he pay? No amount of money. 
In fact, do you know? He wasn't praying. You think about that. You know, if I don't pray for three hours, will God heal me? He will heal you. If I don't, you know, cry and cry and cry, will God heal me? He will heal you. If I don't know how to pray, you know, if I only kneel down five minutes and I said everything I wanted to say, will God give me a miracle? He will give you a miracle. You know, Aeneas did not know how to pray long. He did not even pray at all. But the man of God, Peter, came his way. While he was lying down, an eight-year sickness, the man of God said, Anier, I'm bringing a message from God. You don't merit it. It's not by power, not by might, by my spirit, says the Lord. This is the grace of God. Now, what do you think God is going to do for you now? And yes, well, he doesn't know. All right, if you don't know, heaven has a blessing for you, get it. Arise, take off your bed and go. And that man, the power of God struck him. He was surprised and he started walking. He neither asked for arms. You know, the first man I read about, that one even asked for arms. But this one asked for nothing. He was just quiet. But as the man of God was passing by, he told him, rise up, take up, make up your bed, and he arose. That's the grace of God. God's grace reaching down, raising him up, undeserving. Come to John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 5. John chapter 5 verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity, how many years? How many years? 38 years. John chapter 5 verse 5. And when Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. You know, he didn't know Jesus Christ. If he had known Jesus, he would have said, Oh, Jesus, I've been waiting for you. Heal me now. But he said, Sir, wonderful God. Wonderful God. You know, Jesus did not say, You are insulting me. You call me, Sir. I'm the very Son of God. I'm not, Sir. No, Jesus didn't say that. I'm telling you that God is a God of grace. He said, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled... To put me into the pool, but while I'm a coming, another step is down before me. Jesus says unto him, Rise up, take up your bed, and begin to walk. That's the God of grace. And immediately the man was made whole, and he took up his bed, and he walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is wonderful. The Lord is wonderful. I've shown you people in the Bible that met Jesus Christ. Even beyond their expectation, beyond their desire, beyond their praying, beyond their request, the Lord heal them. There's nothing you are waiting for. The Lord is healing you tonight. Because it's by grace. Rise up and let me pray for you. Don't talk about being fit. That I'm not fit enough to receive healing. Well, everybody will get you because it's the grace of God. So just open your mouth to, uh, to the Lord now and just tell the Lord, I'm not worthy. But yet I'm going to be healed because it's by grace. Beyond your request, beyond your expectation. That's a wonderful God. Our gracious God. A merciful God. A compassionate God. God of grace is the God of grace, and He will do now eat now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Your miracle is coming on the way right now. Your miracle is coming for you right now. The God of grace, the God of power will heal you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. The 
person in the large auditorium that has a um, terrible cough, can you just raise up your hand in the large auditorium to my right? Where are you? You have a terrible cough. And the Lord wants to heal you right now. Raise up the hand very well so I can see you because that's part of the way. Okay, I can see the hand. Amen. Amen. There's another man in another part of uh, the uh, assembly here that this afternoon between two and three you are coughing out uh, blood and you began to be afraid. You're asking yourself, is this tuberculosis or not? Where are you? Who is that person? Wave the hand at me. Between two and three this afternoon it happened to you like that? Where are you? If you are there, can you wave your hand? Amen. Amen. You see somewhere there? Amen. Amen. Right now, I'm going to take authority on that scene. And it's by the grace of God. It's by the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a God of mercy. You are a God of love. A God of great compassion. I'm praying for these people who are raising up their hands. I'm asking for that person in the large auditorium by the right hand. I'm asking that cup will vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. That person that cup blood this afternoon between two and three and is raising up his hand now. I command that cup vanish away in Jesus' name. Amen. All of us in the assembly who have problems with cough, I challenge all those uh, I said all sicknesses vanish out in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The man that has a pain under the right ribs, can you just raise up your hand? Under your right ribs. And I saw you pressing that with your right hand. With the right ribs. Raise up your hand. Raise it up very well. Okay, God bless you. Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever is the cause and the reason for that pain, I challenge you. Come out in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. That person that is dizzy in the head, you are dizzy in the head and it appears, you know, sometimes it appears you will fall down, but the problem is in the head. Can you just raise up your hand? Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking that these people who are raising up their hands now with these problems in the head, they'll be healed right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you devil, troubling these people in that head, I command you, come out in that, of that place in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. The person there with dry throat, and you are managing, and you are... Uh, you know, forcing yourself to breathe and all the time you are making, uh, you know, some sand with your throat. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? You have a problem in your throat. It appears totally dried up and trying to make a sand, forcing yourself to breathe uh, through your throat. Can you raise up your hand? Where are you? Raise it up very well. Oh, yes, I see. You will be delivered right now. Father, in Jesus' name. I command that that problem in the throat will vanish away right now in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen very well. As a man that has a pain in one of the testicles. A man. Terrible pain. One of the testicles. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? If you don't know what that is called, it's in your private part, and it's a real pain there. Where are you? Can you raise up your hand? Amen. God will deliver you right now. <laughs> so just, uh, just put that hand up, and as I pray for you now, the mercy of God will reach you. And you'll be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm calling upon you. Because you are the God of grace, the God of love, and the God of mercy. Deliver these people right now in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have delivered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
I see a man that has been a smoker and uh, you know that smoking has affected your internal parts and you've gone to the hospital, they've told you that the problem is because of smoking and you're not able to leave the smoking and the problem is still there. I saw that, um, was that last month, you went for an x-ray, where are you? Can you raise up your hand? Where is he? So just put up that hand. You are going to get two miracles in one. <laughs> Number one, the desire to smoke will leave you completely in the name of Jesus. And number two, all the sickness that sin has brought upon you, everything will vanish away. And uh, Amen. Amen. And next month is February. You wait till next month, you go to your doctor to take another x-ray. They'll be telling you that everything has gone. Amen. For in the name of Jesus, I come before you. Because you are the God that can raise the dead. A God that can cleanse. A God that can deliver. And you are a God of mercy and a God of grace. People are asking the question, will God heal a smoker? Oh yes. Will God heal a sinner? Oh yes. It's by the grace of God. And Father, I am asking that that man that is raising up his son now in that place, I'm asking that the desire to smoke will leave him completely from tonight in Jesus' name. You devil, I command you. Don't touch that man anymore. Leave him alone. I destroy your cage. And I deliver that man by the name of Jesus. And all the internal parts that are affected in his body, I command now that a cleansing work, a healing work, a creative work will be done within him. And he will be totally healed in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, because I know it's done. It's done. It's done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now because our time is gone, already you've seen how the Lord has been moving. And the Lord wants to heal you tonight by grace and deliver you tonight by grace. And that person that is under the oppression of occultic power, you are getting delivered tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever problem you may have, you have, you are finding, there's somebody here find difficult to sleep at night and you are afraid even to go to bed, you can raise up your hand, God will heal you. Any problem you have, just raise up your hand and the Lord is healing you tonight. He's healing you tonight. He's healing you tonight. Now, uh, that person having the problem on the chest, I see, just lay one hand there and raise up the other hand. Now, person with acute stomach ache, you know, lay your hand there and raise up the other hand. And the Lord is going to deliver you. I see that person having a, you know, a heat all over the body. The Lord is healing you right now. Are you ready for your miracle? Keep your hand up. It's coming to you now. You'll get healed. And you'll get delivered. That man that uh, woke up last night, uh, you know, when a cat was... You know, going around the house and you woke up and you saw that cat and your head swelled up. And from that time you were not able to sleep since, uh, until the morning. Where are you? Can you wave the hand at me? Okay, God bless you. <laughs> the Lord is delivering you tonight. It's by grace. Don't worry about meriting it. Just keep up your hand, keep up your hand. The miracle is coming. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power coming out of Calvary, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I am coming against the sicknesses, the oppression, the evil that are done against all these people raising up their hands. And I ask right now that the sicknesses and the pains and the torment will vanish away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I'm asking, all these people raising up their hands, that uh, trouble in the head, I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. That terrible headache, I'm commanding you, vanish away in Jesus' name. That acute stomach ache, I'm commanding you, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Lord, vanish out in Jesus' name. 
that person that is under occultic power. I command that all those robes of the devil tying you, everything will be loose right now. And there will be peace and release within your body in Jesus' name. That person in the Yoruba class that has a heavy load upon him or her, I'm asking right now the load of the devil will be taken away from you. And your head and your neck will become lighter in Jesus' name. That adult that is see urinating on the bed, even though we have prayed for many people with that problem, I command it stops right now in Jesus' name. That backache I see over there in the name of Jesus, vanish away in Jesus' name. All the problems represented as these people are raising up their hand right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. All those problems in the head, in the neck, in the back, in the legs, in the stomach, in the blood system. That hypertension I command you, vanish away in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. I thank you because I know you have answered. I thank you because I know you have answered. I praise you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just praise the Lord. 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 Amen. In Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed. The person that has been uh, healed of that terrible cough, and um, the Lord is telling me you know it already. Can you? Can I see your hand? Amen. God bless you. I see the hand. Amen. 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 That's what praying. I'm sorry that I had, you know, terrible temperature, but now and the Lord is telling me you are normal. Where are you? Amen. 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 The person that has just been healed of uh, both uh, um, the chest pain and stomach trouble, can you raise up your hand and I'll see you? Amen. God bless you. Somebody had a terrible fear before you came in here, but now it appears that your heart is so cool and you are so peaceful. And if you meet the devil now, you are able to challenge the devil and there's peace in your heart. Where are you? Can I see you? Amen. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. The person with the pain on the right uh, side of the ribs and the pain is not totally gone. Uh, right to my right, in the, um, uh, to my right of the auditorium, where are you? Amen. God bless you. The person in the Yoruba class uh, who has uh, just been healed, uh, you, you felt a heavy load upon you before, but now your neck is free, your head is free. Is she there? Amen. Amen. Now you check up your body. If the sickness is gone, you just uh, put up your check it up first. Check it up. Check it up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The person who had uh, the sharp pain in the private part in mine and the pain is gone now. Where are you? Can I see your hand up? What do you see? Amen. I see the hand. Thank you, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify your name because of what you are doing. And all those who are prayed for tonight, we know that by grace, by the mercy of God, you have given them the healing. We pray that your power will continue with everyone in Jesus' name. For those who are still looking up to you as they go home, may the healing come upon them and the miracle come upon them by your grace in Jesus' name. As we go, protect everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. 